Hi, so this is going to be the tutorial on the Summer Romper. It's a brindle and twig pattern and it's lovely. So what I'm going to show you is my pattern pieces. So I've cut them all out. This is your front pieces that's double layered. This is your back piece to get on the bum. I've got four strap pieces all interfaced. There's your leg elastic. And there's also a waist elastic, which is already inside, which I'll explain to you in a minute. Okay, so I've put interfacing squares, one and a half inch squares, on the top inner pieces up here. On both pieces, even though they've been together, I interface both. That's where your poppers or your buttons will go. Okay, so all I've done is cut the pieces out and given them an iron. On the back piece, all I've done, just cut out the boring stuff here really, is I've surged along the top edge folded it over by an inch and a quarter, fed my elastic through, giving it a good stretch and make sure the elastic's all nice and even with two pins at either end so it's all nice and square. Now I'm going to the actual construction of the main body of the summer romper. So these are identical my two front pieces. Some people do a different colour in the lining, a plain or different. I've just kept it all one because I quite like it. It's beautiful fabric so use as much of it as I can okay so so this is the front body section as I said before this is your bit that goes around the back when it's out you can see it's quite a big piece of fabric but when it's all gathered up with the elastic it looks quite nice so you've got pointy bits on your bum you've got pointy bits on your outside bit they line up so, line them up. You see that's all lined up here. What happens then is, you pop the other half of your front piece on top, lining up with the replica of it at the bottom. Make sure all your points are lined up, nice and square. All your raw edges are flush with each other. This is where I take out that pin and just pop it in through the top. So all that elastic in the three layers are all flush with each other. And you pin it all up the way through. So then that all stays together for when you surge. Okay, get these three nice and flush with each other. If you find your surge, you find it a little bit tricky to go through multiple layers. Just slow down a bit. Don't make it work too quickly and it should trundle on through your layers. Nice and easy. Now a lot of people will pin one side and surge it, then pin the other side and surge that. I pin both sides because basically I'm impatient and like to get things done. <laughs> when I first started sewing, I was a bit of a rush. Oh, rush, rush, rush. Make it really quickly. I don't know why I ever thought that you had to sew quickly. Probably I spent years watching my mum and people sew and they could just sew so fast. And I used to think that's how you do it. If you do, do do it this way, just make sure you tuck your bottom fabric in. You don't catch it when you're surging. And that's those three lined up. Nice and flush with each other. Pin to the top bit. I did a little bit last on this side just because I've already pinned the other half and the weight is pulling on it so I want to make sure it's nice and flush. So. I hate pinning. Pinning is so boring. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that because pins are your best friend. Um, but yeah, I find pinning boring. I used to find the ironing of fabric really boring. And I used to hate when they say, iron your seam open. I used to hate that. God, why do I want to iron? I just want to sew. But it's actually really important. I learned that the hard way. So if you're new to sewing and um, see the instruction and it says, iron, do it because it is so much better. You can get little like mini irons, like little thin dry ones that you can do it on your desk, which is probably a bit... I had one then, but I don't know what I did wrong, but it just 
it didn't like me anyway. So, less said about that, the better. Um, okay, so. I'm just gonna get this underneath before I remove the pin. So the surge is gripping it for me. Um, don't have to go far. and flush with each other. Let the machine do the work for you. So Great British Sunday starts on Tuesday. I'm ever so excited about that. I've heard rumours that they're making a wiggle dress. On the first one or maybe even a jumpsuit I don't have the figure for either I've missed a little bit there see mistakes happen I wasn't feeding it through nice and flush my own fault I'm just gonna go back on it and make sure that's all tucked in nice I'm gonna get that little hole this messy seam will be hidden on the inside so Less a dab, the better. That's how you can get away with it on that bit. Um, yeah, better to just get your seams nice and flush, but you know, we're not all perfect, are we? We are, but human. So, other side. Weight does pull on it a little bit. Don't get their pattern, thank you. So my amazing patterns in use filing system. <laughs> Works a treat until the kids come and use the desk for homework and then move everything around and you're like, great, I've got to resort all of that. Um okay. <laughs> Nearly there now. Lovely. Now you can see you've got three rather messy looking layers. <laughs> right, close the top bit. Turn. When you turn it out, get nice and flush. I do um, poke it with a pair of scissors. To get a nicer point on it, just turn this off a minute. To get a nicer point on it. Okay. So what you've got now is, just so I can show you a bit better, what we've got now is what looks like a really nice front with a back to front back, but that's when you turn it inside out, again, it's all right, but we want it out that way so we can do our bottom seam. And that's, you've got three layers again for that. Show you against the grey. You've got one layer, two layers, and then three layers, and they all need to be flush with each other. This is going to feel a bit baggy, but that's because it's the bum area. That's why it's got all the elastic fabric, so it gives a nice bit of space, especially for nappies. Cloth bum mums, you will love this pattern because it gives you all the space you need for those nappies. Right, those are lined up. Catch them with your pin. Get this size lined up. I can hear my son listening to 
Monsters Inc. in the background. He is obsessed with that film at the moment. I must explain, actually, I'm in P sort of PJs. Raggedy old t-shirt that I wore when I was pregnant. <laughs> a pair of chocolate bottoms because it's actually like half ten o'clock at night. I'd much rather be in bed, but my three-year-old has been teething a bit recently and he had a bit of a late nap today, so... I am awake, he's awake, I'm awake, we're all awake, so I thought I might as well, <laughs> so making more sense than sitting there watching Monsters Inc. He's just the next room. He may well disturb me in a moment and say hi. Okay, oh, I must stop getting my lovely double chin in view. Must be really hideous for you. Sorry if you're watching this whilst eating. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, right, so. Third up your bottom seam. They've kind of got little lips really because that's your fold over bit for um your elastic. But as long as it all goes through, tuck it in just a little bit more. Lovely. Right. When you have a corner, don't worry about trying to angle your serger around the corner. Pull it straight. Just feed all your fabric through nice and straight. Same with this bit on the end here, I'll hold it with my fingers and the pin then just... Obviously you don't want the pin to get caught by the blade. There we go for a second. Right. So that's our bottom seam done. There's no pops or anything on the bottom of this one. I like the breezy and stuff because, I mean to be honest, I don't really need it. I have to put it. Left gap there slightly, so I'm just going to catch that so it doesn't, although it would be fine when we... um. To the leg elastic fold over. I don't <laughs> leave it like that, really. Okay, right. A bit of a raggedy seam at the bottom, but that's fine. So now we need to. Give me that way to say. Um. Now we need to create a channel around the leg hole, and it's just a fold back. I think it's five eighths. What's that? Five eighths of a centimetre of an inch, sorry, is about a centimetre and a half. Mm, about a centimetre and a half, I'd say. A centimetre and a half, fold over, about that. <laughs> um, remember that you've got two pieces at the front, they need to be folded back together, and your back piece is that one single inside out your piece. So what I do for this, it's really, and you leave a centimetre gap. I always leave a centimetre gap at the back, just because when it's gathered up and caught in the bum, between the bum and the leg line, you can't really see if, you, if your sewing goes a bit sketchy at first. If you're new to sewing and stuff, it can, it can look a bit messy. So water, raise, um, water raisable blue pen I've got here, and my trusty ruler. I'm just gonna mark the 1.5 centimetres first. And then I will pin it after. I do both legs together again. I don't like to do separates because it gets boring. Like it's a bit methodical, really. I like to go from, I like to complete it all in one go. But like if you read the um, the Brindle and Twig kind of guidance, which are brilliant, by the way, um, really, really good. It does suggest to. Do them separate, like one point five. Try and get on the lighter blue so I can see it. <clears throat> right, that's that side done. Let's get this side done. So we can fold over. We we'll use a normal sewing machine for sewing in our um. Elastic channel. I do, but I do prefer the patterns where you sew the leg last the elastic directly onto the fabric, and then at a stretch, and then when you release it and fold it over and sew it on, it actually looks really nice and neat and tidy. Some people struggle with that. I personally find it a bit nicer. That's uh, like a leggings pattern or something, which I'll probably do soon just to show you, and. The result, I think the result is much neater. 
once you've got the hack of um, surging on elastic at a stretched point, because it is a bit tricky at first, um, once you've got the knack of it though, you can kind of go be with it. I can hear my just one out there shouting for me now. I don't know what you're shouting me for. I doubt we're all find out in a minute. You should be asleep, little monkey. Right, so as I said. Hi. Hello, my darling. Can you, Paddington? you want to watch Paddington? Paddington. Right, you can watch Paddington when Monsters is finished if you like. Come and get me when Monsters is finished and then you can watch that. But you should be sleepy, my angel. Yeah. It's sleepy time. Oh. <laughs> that is all. What's a painting? Watch painting in this voice. Oh, you got a bit of a croaky voice. Does your throat hurt? What's painting? Watch painting a little one. Mummy can watch it with you in a minute. She's nearly finished here, okay? Okay? Mummy can watch it with you in a minute? Yep. Yep. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. Mummy just finished saying this and then she'll come and watch painting with you, alright? Does that sound like a deal? You got some juice? Are you okay? Yep. Okay, you keep drinking for me then if you've got a bit of a sore throat. Please. Come and eat them. Okay, that, that one pinned. Excuse my little conversation with a little boy. Can't really eat in the room, can I? Bless his little heart. I think it's back teeth, that's all. He does sound a bit croaky, so we'll probably go to the doctor's tomorrow just to get him checked out. Well done, Angel. Yes, um, Great British Sewing Bee. So I wonder who will be on it this week, this year, this series. There was a lady on um, one of the sewing pages that I'm admin for, actually, who... Um, applied for it and she had a television interview but she didn't get any further which is such a shame because we could have had a Cornish lady on there that would have been awesome so um yeah I wouldn't be brave enough to apply god I can imagine the pressure they're under it must be immense in that room although such I'd love to spend time in that room with all that fabric just sewing but I don't think I could handle like the time pressure of trying to get something made and I think I'd probably really struggle with the um, the the one where they get given like a garment and they have to make it into something else. I don't know if I could do that one. Okay. So, like I said, we're to leave a an inch gap or so, just to um. Now on this one. I change my needle position to number two. If you've got this, you've got this machine, then you can do that on here. All that does is align the needle to the left. The reason why I do that is I want to be able to line up my fabric and stuff as I normally would without having to try and help. I like I prefer have this kind of preference when I'm sewing, but how I like to hold the fabric and stuff. So. Having that needle, needle, needle alignment go over, I know if I line up, it will go to the left of the fabric and then I'll create a nice even channel. I won't have to try and remember to push the fabric over to the left a little bit. So basically, I've done... No. That was two stitches at the shortest length. Just I like to anchor the beginning and the end with short stitches. It just sort of holds it in place a bit better. So my little things that I like to do. Um, yeah. Just going to sew the channels in. Also you get to a thick seam. Make sure it's all sitting flush. See it kind of wants to fold the other way doesn't it? Hang me for a minute. Are you playing with mommy's ribbon? Okay, It's tart and thin, isn't it? Oh, went a bit squishy then. There you go. Back on time. Alright, darling, don't mess it up too much. Yeah, I'm going to keep it tidy, although it looks a mess at the minute. Mummy's been making too much to um 
more about tidying, isn't she? She's been busy making instead of tidying. When do we find time for that? Oh, so much to do, but you you need to have a, a nice tidy sewing area, and I just I'm really rubbish at, it, at maintaining that because I make it all nice, and I get really proud of it. I'm like, oh look how nice and tight it is. I can see everything. And, Really accessible, and then give it not even a week, I wouldn't say, a matter of days of decent kind of sewing time, and that's it. I'm done. Okay, so I have left a small gap which we will use the to put the elastic through. I hate thread hanging off, it really annoys me. Just show you that. So there's a really I've only put a, put a thumb size. I don't really need a an inch, but you know that might suit some people. So I'll just do the other side and then I'll put the elastic in after because I just find that easier. You having fun there, Bubba? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ta da! Ta -da! Are you gonna make sewing things when you're bigger? Mum, Mum, we get you a sewing machine. Sewing machine. You can have one when you're bigger. Not, I'm not sure what age other people start, but I think three is probably just a. <laughs> you can have one when you're bigger. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Mummy's talking to these lovely people watching her video about how to make things. So, Mummy. Yeah, Mummy's been showing how to make things. Like Mummy used to watch when she first started sewing. Now she's going to be one of the people that tries to help people to sew. Although she hasn't learned it all herself yet. There's still plenty to learn. Okay, so this is the second one going in. Feel it kinking up a little bit. Yeah. It's quite a hefty seam there. Four bits of jersey and the serger. Oh dear. Oh, come on. This seems to be taking me forever. <laughs> Interruption to a three year old. Conversations about nothing. I'm quite sure I turned the heating off earlier, but I'm really hot. It's quite mild for February, really. Gosh, February already. So, really, it's made me marked over to springtime. Amazing sewing in springtime. Got some gorgeous fabric for some spring rates for my little boy. Um, Okay, so now we put the elastic in. So literally, you just feed it through, a bit like you do with um anything, you know, the waistband when you thread that through. You just in a minute, my darling, mum is nearly finished here. Finished. Yeah, when I finish, I'll come and watch Paddington with you. Okay. Okay. Not very long at all. Go on, mum. Good boy. Okay, so. Get a pin ready so you can catch it before it goes through. There is a gap. I lost the gap then. Distracted by my three-year-old. See, this is what he's like. He's so happy and awake. I just... I don't know. And I would like to be in bed. I don't even watch Call the Midwife yet. I love Call the Midwife. I love all the... um. It's quite like knitting as well. I love seeing the little patterns and stuff on the manny jackets and stuff they wore. They're beautiful. My nan was a knitter. She used to um. She used to knit all the display items that went out in the front of the Liscard wool shop, Liscard in Cornwall. <laughs> Which I just think was amazing. And we used to walk past and be like, "My nanny knitted that." She was really good at it. Left-handed as well. So she taught me to knit. And it's quite a few bits for my boys when they were babies. Got this four. This piece here is really thick to get it through. Mm. 
we've got the seam sticking it through as well. There it goes. Oh. Look at them when they're playing now. Okay. Okay, so we need to around the other side. Obviously you don't want to lose that piece, so make sure you pin it in place. Okay, the other thing is making sure the elastic lies flat. You don't want it to kink up. It's not very comfortable for little ones to wear if it's all kinked up and twisted. They'll be able to feel it on their legs. Okay, so that's pin pulled through. And what you do, and we overlap it about a centimetre and a half or so. Oh my god, that's really stuck on there. Okay. About half an inch, maybe. About that. Overlap it. Stick a pin in. Make sure you don't lose two pieces. So I'm just going to sew them together and get as much of it as you can to lay it underneath. You see, I'm just going to lay it underneath. Hello again, Angel. That's on number two. Nice small stitch. So it holds really well. So I tend to go all the way around the outside of the box around the whole overlap. And then I do a cross in the middle. Some people just do an M, some people do a giant Z. As long as it's well anchored, it's not going to pop out on somebody at some stage. <laughs> They've kind of got it made, really. You get to be hard, haven't you, Angel? Hey, oh, okay, so that's all sewn over. Then you just stretch it out and put it through your your channel. So it's all even. Uh, uh. See how it's all like evenly crinkled? Wow. Okay, then you just. Mummy's talking on the video. A minute, Angel. I know, but <laughs> it's all very interesting, isn't it? That, that ribbon. Okay. All you do now is sewing your little gap closed. That you left open for your feeding of the um, elastic tree. Try not to catch the um, elastic in it, because you want your elastic peel to crinkle up and go nice if it's sewn in to the seam it won't do that as well. Make sure you forwards and backwards at the beginning and the end to secure your stitches in place and that's one leg done. And you just repeat on the other side and then all you've got left to do then is the straps, poppers, and your summer romper is complete. Right, so find the gap. Let's get our elastic. Pop it in. Feed it through. Hopefully, it'll feed through a bit better. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, my channel's more than big enough, so I can't think it's. I think there's some um, toot toot stuff out there now. Oh, it's like I'm going to have a lot to pick up when I finish in here and go back out there. So yeah, I'm thinking about making him a tank romper, which is another brindle and twig pattern. It's really good for summer. Cause it's like a vest top and shorts all in one. And it's got poppers at the bottom, so if you're still nappy changing or they're toilet training, it works a treat for that, which I will be in the summer because he's still not drying. 
he needs to be. He's, he's only a year and a bit off school now, really. So it'd be a lot easier if he was dry, obviously. Well, I don't know, there's another boy to make a mess in the toilet, isn't it? I've got three boys in total. At least his messes are contained. <laughs> Do we ever grow out of that? I don't think so. Oh, right, so almost through. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Look at face with thumbs, or...? This is why I prefer surging the elastic on, because it just... So much easier to me, anyway. A lot of people think it's a lot harder, but anyway, it's all down to preference, isn't it? I wonder if I get some really cute, like, Corby Midwife style sewing patterns. I wonder if they'd let me put their children in them. <laughs> the little girls in these really cute dresses. Oh, I so wish I had a girl. Not all the time, just for like this sort of stuff for making and doing because there's so many lovely girls' patterns. I do make them for my friends' children and stuff. Um, it's quite nice seeing them in it and stuff, but there's nothing quite like dressing your own child in your own makes, is there? Right, pin it. And repeat it again, just sew it in place. Let's keep it nice and secure. Is that right? No, don't do that, darling. You're move making the table move, and that's what the camera's on. Okay. Keep in position down. Don't lose the. You gonna play that in the lounge, my angel? So your boxing. You're not watching TV no more. No TV. Nothing in the way. It's better to use your imagination. Okay, you just do the cross. Okay, trim off all the edges again. Oh, I'm doing it, look. <laughs> right. See your gap shot. Right, got to make some cushions tomorrow. Cushion covers, like from scratch with zips in. So I might video myself doing that if um anybody's interested. I don't know if anyone's interested or not. I was interested in it when I was first watching these videos. Right, let's close this gap. Right, so the main body of your romper done now. Cut off these tails. Right, turn it the right way out and show you. Come on, Mandy. Turn the right way out and show you. Rogue pin. Right. So, even it all out, make sure it's all stretched nicely. All in place. Okay, there you go. So obviously when you give it a nice iron, it's nice and flat. So that's the main body done. Now I need to make the straps that will then sew on the back of here in the middle and over to the front. Some people sew them to the front and have them pop up at the back. It's entirely your choice really. I put the um Pop a bit there, so what I do then is I put one popper facing that way, 
and I put two poppers on the straps just so they've got a bit more options about how to um the size to have it and stuff. Okay, so for your straps, you're going to need your safety pin and your four strap pieces. And let me explain them to you. This is a great way to make a strap. I quite like it anyway. So what I do is nice one so oh, they're all quite big so make sure they're the right way up put them together you can of course pin them I don't find I need to now but you can and I sew across the top and down the length When you're making this in woven some people say add to the length of the strap i don't do that because when they've added interfacing to jersey you've made it non-stretch so clearly that length is enough but if you feel you need to then obviously go ahead you're sewing in your pattern and your make um especially if you, if you are making it for a child who's maybe got a bit of a longer back or Table alone, please. Ethan, I know it's really tempting. Right, so you've done those two, you've got like an L-shaped stitch. I take the corner off. I then, you're so noisy. Hold it out to the right way, as you can see. And then, I, Ethan, Ethan, could you go in the other room for me, please? Ethan, please. Thank you. Oh. Well, you just go and play with it in the other room, my angel. Okay, put your pin in like that. Turn it back out the right way. I knew he was going to interrupt me, you know. I did think, hmm, should I really do this now? Here he comes again. Okay, and then, it does feel a bit funny when you stitch in the top bit, but so down the length. And then I'll show you the nice easy way of pulling it out. Okay. That the stitch looks nice and flat. Ethan, please stop walking the table from the main. Not underneath the desk, please. Because this is where Mummy's sewing. This is press of pressure for it. What's Mummy's sewing? You might hurt her fingers, mightn't you? <laughs> then turn around and go out the other way, please. Out the other way, please. Come on, you little monkey. Right, so now you just start feeding your... Um... feeding your safety pin down the length of the strap and it will fold out the right way for you. It feels really funny when you're putting it when it's got interfacing on it. Now I've got the dog out here as well. I want to see what the commotion's about, obviously. A noisy three-year-old and a French bulldog making as much noise as possible. Right, pull it through. Oh. And there's your strap. Could do with a press, of course, but that always happens. Sometimes your corners aren't popped out enough. I just use the safety pin and like 
pull it out a bit. Just be careful you don't pull the threads too much and like pick a hole in it. But yeah. A bit of a press and that'll be lovely and flat. That's your strap. So then do the other one. So I'll come talk to you when I finish. Hi, In a minute when I finish sewing, but if you keep talking to me, it's going to take even longer. All right. Leave that alone, please. When we just made that, it's not for you to run off with. That's what Nathan makes. We're a bit big for these now. As much as I loved him in this out these outfits. The one time he's walking through um, a local town pushing his push chair with a doll inside, wearing his monster one, and they um, mistook him for a girl. I suppose it was the pram that made him think he was a girl, but he's not a girl, he's a boy who happens to like pushing a pram. So infuriating. Oh my goodness. I'm just getting so annoyed with this now, I've just run out of thread look. I'm not paying attention. Too much going on. What a crappy video for you to be watching. <laughs> it's just like rubbish anyway. Nightmare. Not we need that much now, but not the point. I hate putting a not full bobbin on. That'll do for a second. Happened to the best of us. Find that bobbin thread. Right, here we go again. Ridiculous, it's so far off as well, I don't even notice. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Speed up a bit. Yeah, let's go for it now. Get it done. Hi. Hi, my papa. Quiet. What's quiet? Ryan? Ryan's in bed. My angel has got school tomorrow. School tomorrow. Yes, he's got school tomorrow. It's very important that he gets plenty of sleep, isn't it? Hey. What's that? Yeah, a what is it? That's a, what? That's a hot water bottle. This. That's what Puppy had when he would go to sleep. Wasn't it? Yeah, like big water. Yeah, what? Got water inside. It's got a monkey. There's a monkey. A painting. A painting. The painting of a monkey. That was your painting you did at playgroup, wasn't it? Playgroup. It was your handprint. Through again. What are you doing? Don't bang on mommy's overlock, please. Don't really fancy buying another one. It's a little bit tricky to get started, but once you get started, it's okay. Now, I do like to top stitch my straps because I think it looks neater. But not everyone does. Doesn't tell you to in the pattern. I just do it because I'm a bit of a topstitch fiend, really. I like them topstitched. 
and they hold it nice and flat so when you wash it and dry it although you're not meant to dry jersey fabric in the tumble dryer but I do um, <laughs> I didn't tell anyone else to obvious thing but um anyway there we go Pull this one out, get the corners nice and sharp, if I can. Okay. He is a little some money as my child. Right, we'll stitch it back number three, I think. Give it a bit of a top stitch and I'll sew it to the back and then it's just poppers after that. Um, much as when you go to like St Ives and Mavigizzi and stuff, they're a real pain because they want to do food and they make a horrible sound. In like puppet prints and stuff, I think they look really nice. I like seagull prints. I've got this in, um, I think it's cream or white for my boy to have something made out of it. I'll probably just do him like a t-shirt or a pair of shorts or something for summer. Go to the beach, or and we're going to Butland in May, so maybe uh, good old mine head with the seagulls up there. Celebrating <laughs> a bit. So we have Butland. We go up in um. May. I don't know why, but every time I go, I make myself this little mission to make all of my three-year-old's outfits, one for each day of the week that he goes, so my only pack I make. I managed it last year, okay. I did a few outfits year before and I'll probably make all of them this year. I'm hoping for a really nice beautiful summer so we can have lots of sunshine when we go up there because last year I had to take a few bits ready for the rain because it was um forecast. It wasn't so nice. Right so you've got your straps all done. Now you just put them on the back. So to put them on the back I just in the middle mark it with a pin and then from that work out so I just mark so an inch over and I'll put that one so the inch mark is lined up halfway through the strap pin it in place right my darling yeah. good good and then again on this side, so this strap. And then I'll show you where I sew it in a second. Right, so I'll take this pin out. I don't need that one. I'll use that one here. And what I do is, on the inside, I sew it along the same seam that I did for the um, channel for the elastic to go through. And I do use a triple stitch. 
And the only reason why I do that is so it's nice and secure. No other reason. Leave mum's overlook alone, please. Stick it in place. I'll just go straight along that same line. I would have used. Lovely and secure, and won't pull out. Mm. Children like for rough and tumble play and what have you. Mm. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Are you shooing away? So out, just right along that same line. Right, Can't I even see it. Oh. Lots of I got to see You can see it on the camera, can you? Yeah. Yeah, it's just mummy sewing. Yes, it's sewing. Yeah, it's mummy showing people how to sew, how she likes to sew. <laughs> Is it exciting? <laughs> now, because my son is being rather loud and rather disruptive, I'll just stick pins in the front and show you how it would look if it was all fastened up. Because can snaps are can snaps and buttons are buttons. I can do a tutorial on buttons obviously but yeah that's your basic summer romper done even though there's a three-year-old in the room <laughs> he likes to disrupt you a lot of people say to me gosh how do you ever get anything done you've got three boys oh well this is it this is how I do it so yeah just line them up so it's all the same a minute just so I'm just pinning it in place just to show you Oh, the summer romper. It was really cute. Which one? It's lovely, isn't it? For a little boy to wear. Quack, quack. It's a seagull, not a duck. So that's the front. Oh. <laughs> and there's the back. Yeah. Nice and roomy for the happy. Lovely and cool. Um, people wear them with little t-shirts underneath and stuff. Wow. I think it's really cute. I love this pattern. I was a little bit unsure wow. when I first saw it. But um, Ethan, Mummy's just doing a last minute of talking and then we can go and watch Paddington. But that's it. That's my summer romper. All done. Aww. Lovely. I love it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.